hello everybody hello pastor life you know who this is listen i'm gonna jump right back into part two of uh, moses i couldn't really go through the entire thing because um i was heading to work anywho i want to now break this down as as clear as ever as the, the lord as the holy spirit would give me the utterance to do so so now i'm looking at the life of moses and how strategic and how particular god was with this life that he created and how he planned the life oh it's a powerful thing y'all when the hands of god is upon a person's life you don't even understand what it is that you are doing sometimes you can't even articulate what you are doing but there is something there is something inside of you that's telling you god has it god got you you are under the covering and the covenant of the anointing of jesus christ a covenant of the blood the blood covenant and, and and you are covered i don't even think moses mother understood the child she was carrying inside of her i, I don't i don't even think that that mary that excuse me that uh, moses mother understood the promises that god had for this child's life and that even though at an early age she was he was saved out of his mother's womb and into the basket that was weaved by his mother he was saved he could have drowned in the water you know that uh, the he could have gotten eaten by a fetch or something of that nature but when god has his hands over your life it is so crucial how he maneuver you like he did with jonah he will maneuver you to that place where you run away you are still going to get you still going to come back to where he wants you to be and and so was the life of of of, of, of moses brought up as a prince in the land of Egypt. Ha <laughs> As a prince in the land of Egypt, don't even know what was going on then. All he knew was he was loved by his his mother, the 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 the, the, the king's daughter, and he was loved by the the, 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 the king. The Pharaoh at that time and he had no clues that God was trying to set him up in Kabasa. God was setting up to, to see. I want you to just go grow up in this place and not suffer. I want you to see the land and I'm going to send you back to that same land. And I'm going to tell you to tell your father, the Pharaoh. <laughs> God is too good. He's too strategic. That he needs to allow your people. You are not a Hebrew. Excuse me. You are not an Egyptian. You need to tell them that I am that I am. Uh -huh. I want to ask you who sent you. You tell them I am that I am sent me. And I'm giving you the boldness of the Holy Ghost to go along with you. Yeah, Moses. Moses said, but Lord, I can't. I can't. He said, hush, hush, hush. You can talk, but that's okay. I'm going to send along with you your brother Joshua. When God has his hands on a person's life, he's strategically like a basket weave them together. He's the potter and you are the, uh, you are the clay. He began to mold you and make you into the vessel that he wants you to be. My mama God. And those are times where he, he, you, you're going to have to cry because there, there are some things that he's going to have to uh, remake in your body you know when you are making a clay when the potter is making a clay you see as his hands is going his hands is going his hands is going and there are some cracks crack spots on that part that he has to mess it back up in order to to, to reshift that thing and bring it back to its naturality into its beauty again and that's what god was doing with moses life that's what god is doing with your life that's what god is doing with my life there were things in our lives that god needed to take out so we had to go back to the potter's house we had to enter re-enter into the potter's house and the book of psalms said it he said and i am the potter the book of Jeremiah, I'm sorry. He said, and I am the potter, Jesus says. 
Yeshua said, Jehovah said, and you are declared, I'm going to maneuver you. I'm going to make you. I'm going to mold you into who I want you to be. Moses, I prepared thyself. Who else is on this platform that I'm speaking to this evening? You better prepare yourself. You better prepare yourself because you've been under the fire now. You've been under the refinery in the refinery process. You've been refined. And that's why people don't recognize you anymore when they see you because you are not a refined vessel. You are not the same person anymore. People used to say it's life. Now you are not the same life no more. You are not the same John no more. You are not the same Paul no more. You are somebody completely different now. Why? Because God has molded you in his image. He has fixed you the way he wants you to be. The vessel of honor that he has called you to be. Hey, Rabbis. Slow down, life. Slow down. Slow down. Glory. Rabbis. So glory be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's okay. When Moses was going through the, 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 the clay, when he was the clay and, and the Lord was the potter, uh -huh, when he was going through his process, uh, uh, he couldn't embrace it too well. You know why? Because he was not comfortable to that lifestyle. When when he did what he did and the king found out that he was like a spy in there, they, they, they did what they did to him and then the plotted to kill him to take his life, what they didn't understand was... The hands of God was literally, Isaiah 41 said, that right hand of God that leads us, that controls us, that, that takes us where we need to go, that protects us, was upon the life. Available. Press you connect phone button and say text message to read it. Was upon the life of Moses. And, and so even though they tried to, 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 to destroy him and, and kill him, he, he, he got placed with him the spirit of boldness and the spirit of strength. Ah, my mama sata. The spirit of strength the Lord will put inside of you to keep on to take and keep on taking. That's why you should take and keep on taking. Why? Because you have no reason to be a friend now. Why? Because God is with you. The spirit of the living God walks with you and talks with you. Angels are encamped around you that are assigned to your life. He says in the book of Psalm 91 that he will give his angels one charge over you. And he also said in the book of Psalm 91 that thousand may fall by your side. Ten thousand. You will see them with your eyes, but they will never touch you. My God Almighty. You don't hear me, somebody. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. They will never touch you. They can say all manner of evil things again you it's like all falling down your skin because your relationship with God is too deep they don't understand that they don't understand why you keep getting back up uh, they don't understand why you keep you fall and then you get back up and then they see you shining again they don't understand that that scenario they don't understand that's because you have consecrated your life you have surrendered to God you have given it all to God you have told yourself it is a done deal and that's what Moses did. It was a done deal for him. After he went through all that he had to go through, then God removed him out of Egypt and began to place within him what he needed to go on the journey. My sisters and my brothers, what I come to encourage you today about is know that the hands of God is upon your life. It's so, so high upon your life that people that used to know you will see you and say this is not the same person I knew why it's not because of you not because of your beauty not because you are handsome not because of nothing you know why because you are carrying the anointing the power the glory the dunamis power of God upon your life like I feel it in my hands right now fire you are carrying him on you. And when you are carrying the spirit of the living God on you, you are not the same person. You are totally changed, transformed, renewed, revived in every way, form, and fashion. The book of Psalms says, The Lord revive me, O God. Revive me, transform. Revive me, God. Take away the dead spirit, Lord, and lift my spirit up. Revive me to means to come back. I'm coming back. I'm making a comeback. 
And when I come back, oh my God, to the land of Egypt, ah, I'm just paraphrasing. Oh, dear, Moses said, when I come back to the land of Egypt, I'm taking back everything that God has told me to take away his children. Every, every Israelite is getting out of there. No more slavery. No more slavery. No more having to go through some trials and more slavery and more tribulations. No eating all the time. They're beating you. No more. God said no more. Hey, Rabbi Satori hmm. Besaya. No more. And so Moses did. He followed God and God took him. Let me just cut this thing short. And the power of God was so strong on Moses' life that he would speak with God when he go up my sana. He would speak with God back and forth, back and forth. And that when he came down for the last time, when they saw him, they couldn't recognize him. This is what I'm saying. That they would not recognize you. Why? Because you are filled with the glory. And, and, and Moses had to hide his face and take the veil off because the glory of God was too much on him. And if they look at him too much, it will fall apart. They will not recognize you, son and daughters of God. They will not recognize you. Why? Because they will not, they, they will even envy you. Why? Because they see the anointing and the covenant, blood covenant uh, uh, over your life. They see that God has built a pillar of fire all around you. They see that no weapon faction against your life can ever prosper. They see that the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding your life. Therefore, they can't do nothing with you. They can't do nothing with you. They can try to fight you but they can't they can't get you the weapons will be formed but it won't prosper and moses was able to accomplish destiny and purpose though he was not able to see the the very thing that he was fighting for the promised land why because the israelites this is what god is saying to us the when i have my hands on you don't go back to your pagan worship don't go back to worshiping idols don't go back to worshiping all kinds of nonsense stuff that we have only one god whose name Name is Yeshua Amashia. In the name of the His, in the name of Jesus, we stand on the promises of God. And His word said, He said to us, "And on this foundation I shall build my church." He told Peter, "And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Satan cannot prevail against you. You are the church, and God is preparing you for greatness. God is preparing you for something good. God is preparing you to take you to your next dimension. God is preparing you to take you to your next level. So do not." give up in your preparation stage embrace the process like moses everything that you've gone through in your life was a process every single thing that you've encountered in your life was god taking you through your process understand and it took time for him to take you through that process in order for you to live and tell the story listen y'all i gotta go god bless you as the lord puts on my heart even the more greater i will come through but i pray and i need and god needs you to understand i got you in the days of fear do not fear for i'm not giving you the spirit of fear but of love power and of a sound mind god said don't be afraid i'm with you. i'm with you do not be afraid Isaiah 41 said the mighty right hand of God is the one protecting you, controlling you. The Bible says also that God has placed in the book of Psalms that our hands are hands of war. He prepared our hands for war. Therefore, you should speak to these hands and command them like when you stretch it to whoever is think talking against you. When you stretch that hands up to them, that's going to be fire. And that's going to be something that will happen in the realm of the spirit. So trust God. Love God. Take it in. Take it in. Take, take the word in. Take the word of God in. The good word. Take it in and let it be a blessing to your life. In Jesus' name. I love you guys so much. You guys know I got to go. It's past the life. Bye. Sorry you guys can't see me, but you know how it is. I'm driving, so bye for now.